And then social media, we all talk about social media. I mean, everybody, you know, I can honestly say we haven't figured it out yet, but we do know that it is an integral part of what we do. We do know when we pair social media posts with e-blasts, it's amazing. When we do a post-gazette ad, an e-blast, a social media post, and a radio commercial, holy cow, it's amazing, especially if it's coupon related or an action item. If you're telling them to do something specifically, you can really get them to do it if you start combining your messages and making them happen all at the same time. We spent a lot of time doing social media. The first couple of years, nobody, you know, just like the rest of us, we're posting stuff and you, know, you don't really know if it makes any sense if he's even listening to you or watching, but they were and they have been. And we've built this great relationship with our runners so much so that when we had our kickoff training run, we always have it the first Saturday after the new year. There was a terrible ice storm and we were communicating only over social media and we were able to get the majority of our runners not to come. So they do listen. They were very appreciative of being able to follow us on social media to find out if the event was canceled. And again, it's been helping us build our brand. Talking about this social, the social aspects of what we do, we know it's a journey. We know these people, you know, they train a great long time for these events. And it's when they're done with the event, they're not done with you necessarily. And the key is to keep that journey and that conversation going. And that's something that we've continued. We spend a lot of time communicating with them and sharing their stories. We don't really share their stories, they share their stories. We've used our Facebook page. There's a widget that we've added to it. It's called a hashtag gallery which allows them to post at any given time using one of our hashtags onto this gallery. And we've been able to capture many of these amazing pictures of them and they feel connected to us at all times. Because of that, what we learned over the years was we were building this great relationship via social media and then on race weekend, we would disappear because we were running a race. And we weren't in our office, we weren't able to answer the phone, we weren't on our computers and we would come back on Monday morning and you could see whether or not they liked your event. <laughs> and you could read for hours, page after page after page, whether they hated it or they loved it or you know something was happening and you missed it. And so what we decided to do was create an event social media center two years ago. And you know, if you think about scaling it, I mean, ours was a little bit large. I mean, it would probably be the equivalent of maybe two rows of, of these with people sitting at computers basically monitoring all our social channels and having conversations with these people. But at the same time, for our smaller races, we still do it. We just only have two people and they just sit somewhere with their computer and they're still monitoring their social channels. And even if it was smaller, you could have someone with just an iPad or their phone and do the same thing because we've done it that way too. Because this is something that we were trying to do but we didn't really understand how to do it. But essentially it's a giant, it's the equivalent of a customer service center, it's just that you're doing it via social media. And we actually asked our participants, hey, if you have a question, we're here, we're listening to you if you want to know where to park, if you want to know where to eat. And we welcomed everyone as they came into the city. If they let us know they were here, we welcomed them, we wished them luck, we asked them what races they were doing. And it really was a phenomenal process. And all it did really was, again, build this relationship that we've been so desperately working to create with our runners. And the best part about it was we used Visit Pittsburgh, our convention and visitors bureau to be a part of that process. So they came and sat in our social center with us. Who better to talk about Pittsburgh than the convention visitors bureau? And it doesn't cost them a dime. It didn't cost us a dime. They want to do it. They are doing it. And so when someone's asking us what's the best place to eat pasta, they're going to tell you or they're gonna ask other people, what do you think? So it worked out really well, and we've done it for two years, and I said we've done very small scale versions of it for our smaller races. And I think it's worth the effort, it's worth the time, it's worth the dedication of one or two people. Now this center was a little bit larger, we did 60 hours of social media monitoring, and we had shifts of 10 people, we didn't get 10 for every shift, and they were volunteers. We had one staff member and an intern that really worked that room the entire weekend. So it was great, and I think it's worth the effort, it's worth the time, because that's where people are listening to you, and you can get some amazing content for your events for later. Photos, stories, and they're not they're not stories that you're making assumptions about, you actually have it, they're telling you the story about something that happened at your event. And then also from an operations standpoint, you can find out where your weak spots are. If everyone's complaining about mile 23, you know there's something going on at mile 23. 
and you can send your course person out there to figure out what the heck's going on at mile 23. Even if it's something in the future, well, we know there's an issue, there's a pinch point, there's a whatever going on at some particular aspect of your course, and you know that that's something you need to work on, and you can try to quell some of those issues and comments, and you know, people love to tell you exactly what they think, and then after a while, they'll say, oh, well, you know what, I see that everybody else posted about that, so I'm not gonna say it too. So it's really a good way to gauge what potential issues you might have even from a media standpoint. It's very powerful, so I certainly wouldn't overlook social media and the power of social media. And then even that social media for good. When we do stuff for the community and when they learn about how we're plugging back in, that our cups are compostable, that we're giving shoes to kids, they become fans of ours and they really want to support us and that's what they've been doing. And at the same time, we get pounded just like everybody else. We did a green shirt for men and a pink shirt for women for this year's marathon and you would have thought that we had, I don't even know what you would think we had done, but we were sexist. We were just the most awful people in the whole world. So with social comes the good and the bad and you just have to be willing to, I'd like to say it rolls off my back, but it does not. It keeps me up at night, but we do the best we can and to all of you can certainly appreciate all the work that goes into events and you can also appreciate that they don't and that they probably never will understand all of your hours that go into it.